Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Phasmophobia Help Hotline. Today, we're going to be going over and discussing the sound sensor rework, as well as the new screens in the van. As we can see already, they've changed the look of them quite a bit. As it was mentioned in the patch notes, they also work and function like candles in the sense of placement, compared to the way they were before, where they acted like motion sensors and would be able to be placed on walls. Now let's take a look at the screens in the van. As you can see, they have a new, easy to read, and a very sleek looking design. However, the functional side of them has had very little change. So let's focus on the sound sensors and what has changed. As you can see, we've picked up a loud noise on the foyer sound sensor. This area covers more than just the foyer, as it reaches into the boys' bedroom, the nursery, as well as the bathroom, and a part of the living room. However, the living room hasn't picked it up, leaving us with this area of where the sound came from. However, if we were to get a sound and it only showed up in the living room, it would be the opposite. Or, if we get a sound that arrives on both sensors, it means it's in the overlapping area between the active sensors. Because of this, and the way the sound sensors work, you can really use the overlapping area and the placement of your sensors to help track the ghost in the sense of where sounds are appearing. Or, on the opposite end of the spectrum, you can cover a large area by not having them overlap to help you track down where the ghost is and slowly narrow in your search radius. The other thing to consider is that sounds have a specific level they reach when they are detected by the sound sensors. From small minute noises that the house just naturally creates, or what I believe it to be, to opening doors, running water, and even singing. However, every single sound of the game, with the addition of new sounds, is a lot to remember. However, let's head back in and let's expand and create a better network of sound sensors. So first I'll be placing one on the end table in the boys' bedroom, taking the one from the foyer and putting in the master bedroom bathroom. From there I'll be picking up our one in the middle of the living room and moving it to the dining room table. Last and not least, we'll take our final sound sensor and put it on the shelf in the garage. This should give us a good net. Now this is a good example for a setup I would use when I'm still looking for the ghost. You can see that we have a broad range of different areas where we'll be able to detect sounds. From there, we'll be able to narrow down our search. As you see here, we have one in the boys' bedroom, which means it's coming from somewhere inside this area. The next thing you can see here is we have a lingering sound in the boys' bedroom. It's staying at a steady rate, but quite low. One thing I did notice is that even though it was there, we could get an additional sound, maybe a door opening, and it would return to that level. But after a while, that lingering sound did disappear. For an example, for a check, to make sure it wasn't the radio, I went and turned it on. We can see that we're hitting a much higher rate with the radio on, but it is still that lingering sound. And it can still be affected by other sounds as you can see the level increased again. Now, let's head back into the house and we'll change our map setup or our net of sound sensors. This time I'm going to focus on having more of them overlapping and show you the difference on how we can narrow down to exactly where the sounds are coming from. This is a great way, especially in the higher difficulties of the game like Nightmare Mode, to keep track of your ghost and where it's heading. It can also help you discover or figure out if it's left fingerprints or other evidence by following or tracking down these areas. For example, if you have a team member in co-op in the van watching this, and he's seeing sounds are coming from a specific area, you can navigate your team there to hopefully find your evidence. So what I did this time is I left the one in the boys' bedroom, and I went to get our one out of the master bedroom bathroom. I'll be moving that to a closer corner wall in the living room. After that, I grabbed our one from the dining room table, and I moved it to on top of the washing machine of the utility room. And lastly, I grabbed our sound sensor on the shelf in the garage and moved it over to the toolbox to the closer wall. Now when we look at our map, we can see that we have a lot of overlapping areas, and when we get a sound, we can narrow it down quite a bit to a specific area. As you saw, we already had pre-existing sounds, but the new spike was only affecting this one area. Now as we return, we see this lingering sound is coming from a crossover area of the boys' bedroom as well as the living room. And in this case, a spike sound comes from that area as well. But because of the garage, that area is no longer included. And this will also happen for the living room and the bedroom areas, as well as the utilities room. Leaving us a very small area where this specific sound came from. 
As you can see, when we have these overlapping areas, it can really help us narrow down to exactly where the ghost is making these sounds. Placing your sound sensors in good areas and having a balanced net of overlapping zones will help you track the ghost. But for now, let's take a look at another sound and see how the overlapping areas affect it. So as you can see, we're overlapping in three areas, which leaves us with this area here. However, the one missing means that that sound didn't occur there, which narrows the area down even more. Which we can specifically tell that that sound came from the bathroom near the entrance, so probably by the sink or the doorway. With that example, you can see that we specifically narrowed down an area where you'd be able to send a teammate to maybe check for fingerprints or an EMF reading. Now, another thing that I notice here is that the lingering small sound that we had observed earlier is existing in that same area, everywhere except for where the utility closet touches. As I mentioned earlier, I'm very interested in what this sound is, and I hope to figure it out and pass that information on to you. So I decided to head in and take a look around for this lingering noise. However, as I approached the bathroom, I didn't see anything that stood out of place. Further investigation will be required. I did, however, decide to turn on the sink and just see that it was at the same level as the radio. And as you can see here, we have a lingering noise in our three overlapping areas, as we had had the sound before, narrowing it to that same area as I mentioned, near the front entry of that bathroom, near the sink or doorway. You can also see here that we're getting spike sounds in other areas, which include the boys' bedroom and the living room crossover area, which could be even the back part of the bathroom, and here where we get the front door or sink. Now, as I'm sure you've noticed, I'm just here in solo on Tanglewood, figuring out the sound sensors, how they work, and creating this video to help you use them. However, I did have an interesting event occur as I was doing this, and I was out at the van when it happened, so you'll be able to see as well. As I was closely monitoring the sound sensors, I had a huge spike from all four of the sound sensors at the same time reaching 100%, which means it came from this small area in the foyer. I thought the sound could be maybe the ghost manifesting or popping a light bulb, perhaps the red room event, or a mass explosion from a poltergeist. However, without eyes inside, I didn't actually catch what the event was. And I'm hoping when I do my co-op sound investigation, that we'll be able to figure out what these large 100% spikes are and what generated them. The next thing I wanted to test out was a different layout, one more for searching the house for sounds. You can see here that I've spread them out with very little overlap, but large coverage in all the areas. This included one dedicated to the basement. The next thing I wanted to check out was more in regards to the map screen. I wanted to set up some motion sensors to see if they reacted differently on the map or with the new sound sensor rework. However, as I did, all I noticed was that the motion sensors seem to be working the same way as the sound sensors are as they function in placement like candles, meaning you can no longer use them on walls. This made it extremely tricky to find a good placement for them compared to what I was used to, so that's something to keep in mind whether the change was intended or not. However, they had no changes on the map screen or affected the sound sensors in any way. Another thing to note is it seems like the dots projectors are under the same effect as the motion sensors as well as the new sound sensors and the fact that they won't be placed on the walls anymore. So hopefully this little overview of the new sound sensor rework helped you out. Thanks for stopping by. If you enjoyed the video, if it helped you, drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you like the best about it. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. If you're looking for other helpful videos, you can find them there too. I have ones about fast easy ways to make money in phasmophobia, or tips and tricks just to help you get through nightmare mode. In addition to my Pride and Joy story series, we follow two university students in their travels in the world of phasmophobia. It's kind of like watching a TV show about your favorite game. I would check that out too. More importantly than anything though, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.